September 9th administrative conference of Shreveport City Council is now called to order. Would you please stand? Councilman Webb will lead us in an indication, followed by a pledge by Councilwoman McCullough. Father, yes, please. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful day. Just thank you for the blessings you pour out on us. That's your blessing on each and every person here today. Father, we just thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. And we ask you to go with us today, help us in our deliberations, and uh, put the words in our mouth and uh, actions that we take today be pleasing in your sight. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Place your right hand over your heart and make a pledge of allegiance in unison. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Ms. McCullough? Here. Mr. Everson? Here. Mr. Oliver Jenkins? Present. Mr. Corbin? Here. Mr. Webb? Here. Mr. Shine? Present. Mr. Sam Jenkins? Tomorrow, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Administrative Conference and City Council meeting on August 26th and 27th. At this time, does any first recognitions or distinguished guests? If not, we welcome everyone who is here with us today. Uh, Mayor Glover, do you have any awards, recognitions, distinguished guests, or city business? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. We'll uh, combine uh, recognitions and acknowledgments and communications all in one in the interest of time. I uh, want to, uh, as usual, thank all of those who are here assembled with us today for taking time from what I know are busy schedules, whether you're joining us uh, here in person or uh, via Ustream on today or tomorrow. Uh, by uh, Comcast as well. Always uh, great to see folks who take time uh, to come and engage uh, their local civic process. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members want to, uh, to take a moment and express great appreciation. We'll do so again as well tomorrow during the regular meeting to um, Patrick Russell uh, and Shelly Rabel uh, and Wendell Delaney uh, and uh, 10 high school football coaches and 10 high school football teams uh, who have all come together, uh, and, and most especially uh, Denny Landers from uh, Denny Rogers from Landers Dodge, uh, for their uh, continued uh, commitment from a sponsorship perspective uh, to what this year will be the third annual Battle on the Border. Uh, now for those of you all who can remember, this is an effort uh, that uh, started, as we mentioned, uh, year before last, uh, and uh, uh, has just simply gotten not only better but bigger. Uh, this year for the first time it will include two days of games, uh, two games on Friday uh, and another three games on tomorrow where we'll give you a, a detailed rundown of those during tomorrow's communications as well. Uh, but uh, it's something that we're very excited about. Teams are coming from Louisiana uh, and from Texas uh, and from Mississippi. Uh, and this is some of the very finest uh, high school talent anywhere in the, uh, in the country and it's going to be uh, a wonderful event. And so we want to thank those folks uh, who uh, came up with the idea, uh, the staff who embraced it and got behind it. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, 10 coaches uh, who have decided to come and, and be a part of something that's different, uh, but that's also very exciting and that we think is going to be a, uh, a great gift to the uh, football fans of, uh, of this area. Also want to uh, to take a moment uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, Jeff and, and um, Oliver and some others of you uh, may be able to give me more of the specifics. I think it starts on the 20th. We will have uh, the, uh, I think it's the second annual DigiFest South that will be between Shreveport and Bossier. Uh For those who are part of the, uh, the information generation, uh, who understand what it means to, uh, uh, to, to engage in a hackathon or a code fest, uh, this is one of the things that you will recognize. Uh, we are having a larger and larger presence and representation of that within this community. It will be hosted between the uh, um, Red River District uh, and Cohabitat, as well as the Bossier Civic Center, uh, with other events scheduled around uh, the area and the region. Uh, we certainly uh, will have more to talk about with regard to that tomorrow as well, but encourage all to engage uh, in line with that. Uh, the, uh, the good folks from Cohab, I believe, will have their official ribbon cutting. Uh, an entree into their space uh, in that area uh, in the district on the 20th of this month as well. Uh, and so that's uh, just another piece of good news in terms of uh, our efforts 
uh, collectively to try and turn around uh, and uh, reposition and reprogram uh, that public space into something that ends up being uh, more of a positive. Uh, and then lastly, Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, on a, a very sad <coughs> note, I want to uh, express uh, condolences on behalf of uh, myself and Veronica uh, and the administration uh, on the uh, passing of Kojo Livingston. Uh, Kojo uh, was a uh, reporter for the, uh, the Shreveport Sun, <coughs> and uh, I think the uh, uh, the best way I could sum up uh, Kojo for those folks who've asked me about him uh, and the significance of his life and his, and his passing was that uh, uh, Kojo was a man who spoke uh, truth to power uh, without fear and without hesitation. Uh, and any time a city loses a man uh, of that ilk, uh, then uh, we're at loss quite a bit. So uh, send out, again, our condolences to, uh, to his family uh, and all of his friends and, and all of us who, uh, who had a great deal of respect and appreciation for him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the council. Thank you, Mayor Glover. Councilman Chad. Mr. Chairman, uh, Shelley, uh, is the temperature turned down because Arthur's having some hot flashes? <coughs> Are you cold? <laughs> <laughs> He's reached that age now where he has those hot flashes. I've, I've been up in his office and it's been kind of cool up there, so I didn't know whether he told you to make it cool down here or not. Uh, Otto, so uh, I'm going to bring you. like my jacket, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. And, and uh, Mr. Chairman, the other thing, uh, B, I think tomorrow the minutes will be official. Is Do you it, approve them? Huh? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> the council would like to do the same thing, send out uh, condolence to uh, Kojo Lewis's family. Uh, he uh, was an intricate part of our community, uh, strictly a professional journalist, and uh, and Oliver was also a community activist. So, you know, I just I just like to have that noted in the uh, minutes for tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you, B. Also. <coughs> um. For those of you that are interested, it's my understanding that uh, funeral arrangements for Coach o. Livingston is Wednesday at 11 o'clock at the Evergreen Baptist Church. Good. Good, Rob. We'll be sure to communicate that tomorrow as well. At this time, does any uh, council member have any concerns relative to property standards? All right. Off the hook. <laughs> well, I, I will mention just quick while you're up there, and I think I already um, got a notice of it, but um, the, uh, we had an email last week um, that was sent to some of the uh, folks from KCS um, about sort of maintaining some of their uh, right-of-ways that are in the city, you know, close to downtown, and um, that run along Southern uh, Avenue as well. And um, so just... Uh, just so you know, um, we'll, we'll keep y'all posted on, on any responses we get from there. But if y'all see uh, aren't continuing problem, uh, don't hesitate to cite it. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. I think that we've all received a revenue collection plan and uh, bond forfeitures report electronically. Well, if you've gotten, you've gotten bond forfeiture, you'll get revenue tomorrow. Okay. And we'll have a brief report tomorrow. That's okay. There's no public hearing schedule for this week. Um, Mr. Sibley, is there any items to be added to legislation? None that we're aware of, Mr. Chairman. I have no request to speak at this time. We do have one confirmation, Mr. Sibley. Yes, sir. That's the city's assistant city engineer, Ms. Kathleen Autumn Permitter. She is here. We respect and we would ask that you uh, uh, vote on her confirmation tomorrow, but she he is here, and I would ask Mr. Chairman if it's okay, Barbara, sure. bring, or excuse me, I guess Ron would be the more appropriate person to bring her forward and uh, introduce her, and that way if the council has any questions, uh, we can address them at this time. You may be right, I can't <laughs> We didn't vote on her last time. Well, both of you, since uh, we will primarily handle your affairs. No, we had it last week, but we didn't bring it on the agenda. It probably would be more appropriate. Well, Barbara's back there. This was a 
collaborative effort between Barbara and myself. We ended up choosing the best person for the job. Uh, as you well know, we're getting into the consent decree projects, $350 million worth. It was very important that we chose someone who has a good relationship with Barbara. That was actually number one. Uh, Autumn has very good experience. She's been on our staff for a little over three years. Two and a half. Two and a half? Okay, close enough. Uh, she's been impressive, and uh, we believe we've made the right decision. So, what else would you like to know before uh, I let like to Autumn say, say something? <coughs> huh? If Autumn would like to make a sure. few comments. I would definitely like to uh, thank Mayor Glover and Mr. Sibley for the recommendation and Lauren Lillard and Barbara Featherston for their encouragement and support. Um, we have very big shoes to fill, but very excited for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, Barbara says right. filling your shoes, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's, um, Autumn has been great to uh, work with. Um, as, as Ron said, she came on board about two and a half years ago. Um, when when we hired her, you know, since that time, it's what can I do, what can I do, what can I do. Um, the water and sewer staff absolutely have the most respect for her. She's out in the field, she listens, and that's probably one of the biggest things that, that my staff, my new staff and water and sewer appreciate is that she sits back and she listens to take in what they have to say because engineering is really a support group for those folks. And um, she's, whatever it takes, she's been there to, uh, take care of it and very well organized beyond <coughs> organized um, I wish I was that organized um, but she's she's great and and we're looking forward to you know um, the next several years good and I've been in some meetings with with Autumn as well and full of information and I think we're ready to put her to work in case there's any doubt we all like chocolate chip cookies in the back about, <laughs> about, about 245 <laughs> thank y'all Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. And again, we will ask tomorrow for a positive vote okay. on this permit. And Mr. Sibley, I just got a message from someone saying that Ustream is not working. I don't know if that's correct or not. We'll check it out. Okay. That will effectively send a message back to the appropriate folks in back who should be listening. I thought so. Checking that out for us. Uh, all right, Ms. Sibley, there are no items under consent ag agenda for introduction. Let's continue to items to be adopted. Under Section 9, regular agenda legislation, these are resolutions on second reading and final passage, or which will require only one reading. Number 159 authorizes the mayor to execute an agreement with Eric Cottrell and Lewis Wallace to permit commercial turtle trapping on Cross Lake. Number 160, uh, I'm sorry. Sibley, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, Tomorrow, if we have not heard it right, I ask to uh, postpone this. Okay, and we do have uh, a representative from SPD who is familiar with that uh, operation. If the council had any questions or any needed any information from him, he is here in the. In the uh, now, Mr. May, I had, I had told them that uh, the first group that they called and they was fixing the turtle suit, that they would have to bring some down so we could. Test it. Check it out. It's pretty good. <laughs> so today I get ready here. Yes. It's pretty good. Thank okay. you, Mr. Shy. Number 160 authorizes the use of certain equipment by the Susan G. Coleman for the cure. Number 161 authorizes the use of certain city-owned equipment by the Junior League of Shreveport Bossier. Number 162 authorizes the use of certain equipment by Sports Spectrum Race Management. Number 163 authorizes the mayor to execute a donation agreement between the city of Shreveport and Mike Tilton Development for the private sewer main extension and related facilities to serve 9400 Linwood Avenue. Number 164 declares the city's interest in certain adjudicated property as surplus and otherwise provides with respect thereto. Number 165 declares the certain adjudicated property to be surplus, which will authorize the mayor to sell the city of Shreveport's tax interest in these adjudicated properties. And that's the end of that section, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? Just an administrative note on 162. I know that our attachment there says it's the Firecracker 5K. It's actually Autumn Breeze, or Autumn Breeze Race, if that matters. 
but I think the document is correct. Support spectrum? Yeah. All right, Mr. Sibley, please I'm proceed with the introduction of resolutions. These are resolutions not to be adopted prior to September 24, 2013. Number 166 authorizes the mayor to execute an act of release of a 10-foot wide servitude located between lots 1 and 2 of Southern Trace Phase 4, Section 20 Alpha, and located in Section 32, 16, 13 West. Number 167 authorizes the mayor to accept a FY 2012 Assistance to Firefighters Grant Program Fire Prevention Safety Grant. And that concludes that section, Mr. Chairman. Any questions or discussion? All right, Mr. Sibley, let's continue. Section C is introduction of ordinances not to be adopted prior to September 24, 2013. Ordinance 103 <coughs> amends the 2013 Capital Improvements Budget. This is regarding SPAR. Number 104 is an annexation, tag number 12-09. It enlarges the limits and boundaries of the city of Shreveport, an 83.83 acre tract of land located east of Wallace Lake Road and north of Southern Trace Parkway, located in Section 30, Township 16, Range 13 West, Cattle Parish, Louisiana. This, uh, there's a map attached and this ordinance requires a public hearing to be held on September 24, 2013. Any discussion? Do we also have any, um, and I haven't looked on this, um, oh, for some reason I lost my place, sorry. Um, the uh, annexation, do we have notes from um, Impact master plan? plan? Do we have master plan um, comments on that as well? I'm can, not sure. Can we get those before sure. the, the public they, they are on there. Okay. 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 I know we have the impact information very brief, yeah. Oh, I got it now. I got it now. Don't say thank you, Ron. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just okay. there's also Councilman, there's also a, a modified, if you will, uh, impact form from Malcolm. So as you go through that, if you see information that maybe you need differently or need more, please let us know. But we're trying to get the best format to get that information to you in conjunction with these. Okay. Well, maybe I'm reading the wrong thing, but on the I'll call it the background sheet master plan consideration it's not fit i mean it's ends in a half a sentence but maybe i'm reading in the wrong yeah. spot no it gets cut off i mean it, mm, it right yeah, it's like the box was full and then that was it but i mean if there's more to it other than just best practices yeah, it looks like or, it I mean, ran out of room there it, is there more to it other than just like a best practice? Where, where are you ending off? We end city's annexation practices and cautions against expanding the city's. Oh, okay. Expanding the city's boundaries until annexation rules or considerations and fees have been adopt, adopted, which is expected to be part of the Unified Development Code. It is on the hard copy, Ron. I have it here, yes. Yeah, it got cut off on that. Yeah, okay. So, the way I hear that sounds like we should postpone this until the UDC, according, I mean, and I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, but that's the way that. I, mean, I think this is kind of our standard response to any annexations until the point that we do revise the UDC. I believe so, Mr. Chairman. Also, this is one of those that, that has been pending a while. Of, it's my appreciation. This is one that's been pending probably a couple of years, and it's a part of those that yeah. uh, Ron and Mike, that the mayor had looked at early on, what are those that are contiguous that we expect to bring in at some point. And this is we, one of those, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is the St. Andrews development. Okay. So it's to be considered. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma we would ask. As a part of the, your, the new code? I mean... It would, okay. be, no, it would be considered outside of that. Oh, okay. All right. And as indicated, there is a public hearing that would be held on on the 24th of September. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. If no additional questions, Mr. Sibley, let's continue with the ordinances on second reading and final passage. 
Number 93A amends the 2013 Capital Improvements Budget. This is regarding the FTA Federal Transit Authority Grant. Number 96 amends and reenacts Chapter 14 of the Code of Ordinances by adding Article 5 relative to file. Ordinance 97 amends the 2013 Capital Improvements Budget. There is an amendment. Uh, as we indicated in the previous meetings, removing a couple of water projects and replacing them in that ordinance. Ordinance number 98 amends the 2013 general fund budget. This is regarding property standards. Ordinance number 99 is zoning matter C4713. This amends and reenacts portion, uh, amends and enacts portions of chapter 106 of the code of ordinances relative to an SPI 6 design overlay district. Number 100, zoning matter C6113 amends chapter 106-1 of chapter 106 of the Code of Ordinances, the City of Shreveport Zoning Ordinance regarding the clarification of language. Number 101 is zoning matter C6313. It amends chapter 106 of the Code of Ordinances, the City of Shreveport Zoning Ordinance, by rezoning property located on the south side of Burt Coons, 520 feet west of Dean Road, Shreveport, Kettle Parish, Louisiana, changed from B2, Neighborhood Business District, to B3, Community Business District with MPE, MPC approval, and this is regarding the 3300 block of Burt Coons. Ordinance number 102 is zoning matter C6713. It amends chapter 106 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Shreveport Zoning Ordinance, by rezoning property located on the northwest corner of Martin Luther King Drive and Hill Street, extending north 300 feet on the west side of Hill Street, Shreveport, Cattle Parish, Louisiana, changed from B3, Community Business District, and R1H, Urban One Family Residence District, to B3E, Community Business District, extended use, limited to a storage yard, towing service, and residence only. And that concludes the pending legislation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sibley. Any questions, discussions? Councilman Oliver Jenkins. Um, were you going to talk about the chicken? Thank yeah, you. I was, yeah. We'll start with him because then I want to ask that question about that. Yeah, my, mine is quick, um, and it's that uh, this ordinance that was on there regarding foul, uh, the ordinance number 96, uh, the intention, my intention is to ask that we send that to the Master Plan Committee. Um, that, that particular uh, subject matter is covered both in MPC, CADO, uh, and City of Shreveport law. So it really needs to go there to, um, to be uh, flushed out a little bit more by the, by the other groups. So uh, I'd ask that we just uh, forward that to the master plan committee. For the sake of this argument, uh, I mean, for the sake of our agenda, are you going to propose moving it to, the, to table it? Yes, we can either table it or postpone it. I'm open to either. I'm, I'm not. You know, what we'll do is uh, I'll ask that we refer the matter to the committee. Uh, and in the interim time, we have the option of either postponing it um, to, you know, by a month or two months, or we can put it on the table either way. I'm comfortable with that. either one. Okay. Okay. Um, first thing is relative to SPI 6 Ordinance 99, there is going to be a small amendment yet with regard to some of the language therein, but it doesn't substantially change that so we should have that ready to go for tomorrow and I'm asking for everybody's support on this particular piece of legislation certainly popular in my district secondly um, Roy is Roy in here Good yes, sir. Roy, can you tell me a little bit I know you sent me an email but I still don't quite understand what the I understand what accessory use is Mm -hmm. What is the intent of the change about? Well, uh, somebody else, not us, proposed a different ordinance to kind of preclude uh, a certain interpretation of the zoning ordinance that it was, in my opinion, was already covered by the correct definition of accessory use. So we simply added language that, in my opinion, doesn't change anything at all. It just precludes those incorrect interpretations. Okay, so, I mean, is there any reason why you can't tell us who proposed the change? Well, it had something to do with uh, an ABO ordinance, as I recall, uh, an interpretation that Centenary College did not have the right to use their food service facility 
for any purpose other than for students. There but, that's a, not, but that's not in reference to this SPS 6. No, this no, is what's going I'm not talking about. Oh, you're number, talking I'm talking about, talking about mm -hmm. number 100. No, I yeah, I'm sorry. No, that is, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that one. That is exactly what Roy is talking about, is that um, Centenary College, as well as many of the other, uh, so it came up because Centenary College, and I think you'll remember because we did vote on something allowing them yeah. to be able to have outdoor events with alcohol as long as they got a third party caterer. But in the process of doing that, it opened the conversation about they were like, well, why don't we have zoning for our caterer? Because they're a caterer that provides lunch and meals for wow. students every day. And that caterer was interested in if they could get a. Um, you know, if they could get a license to do um, catering sure. events as well. So it opened up a larger conversation of, well, when a third party is working on a campus, and this happens at any, you know, many churches, at many schools, at many daycare centers, and, and places like that, uh, is that to be considered a separate business? And I think this is a clarification saying no, it's an accessory use. If I'm not mistaken, there was a, a proposal to amend the ordinance that extended the right to colleges to provide food service. And, and I said, well, why just food service? Why not the library, the sports facilities, all these other things? And, and it was my opinion that these were correctly accessory uses yeah. that, that apply to a number of situations. And I simply added those, you know, those examples to the definition to make it clear that that's what it refers to. In my opinion, it doesn't substantively change the ordinance at all. So the, the only thing we're changing are these first three definitions that all begin accessory kitchen, accessory structure, accessory use. No, just accessory use is the only one that's proposed to be changed. I thought I emailed the one that's marked up to everybody. And that's the only one that changes accessory use. And like I said, it doesn't really change the definition, it just elaborates on it. Okay. So that it's not misinterpreted. Uh, it, in my opinion, it changes absolutely nothing. In with regard to the Moose Lodge, Moose Lodge, who it was the Moose Lodge that came in front of us, right? Well, that, there's an exception that relates to fraternal organizations, but that's another issue. So, do they? So, in the terms of that lodge, for them to provide. you know, food or alcohol, would that fall under accessory use? Well, I think it would, except that they are exempt from those requirements anyway, because they're specifically exempted as a fraternal organization. I think, you know, is my recollection. I don't have that ordinance well, in front of us a few months ago and had a problem with it. I thought that that problem that they were, if I remember correctly, and I may very well not, but I thought that the, their issue sort of stemmed from wasn't an outdoor event. An outdoor that, event and alcohol. I think that's. Right. I think that, that um, out, once again, outdoors was. It, it, it may be the outdoors that relates to that, but they, I think they're exempt from from requiring a special exception. Right. It's a chapter ten issue, okay. not a zoning. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Okay. 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 Um, we were wondering if we could uh, rewrite this ordinance to just uh, change accessory use so that we don't have to print this whole thing in the uh, paper. That's up to y'all. We, yeah. We've had problems having it mispublished when we do that. But Can we try it one more time? Yeah. I'm all for yeah. it. Saving money. Yes. And, and uh, Julie, will you do it and then we'll just substitute that one for it tomorrow. Councilwoman McCulloch, do you have a question? Yeah, in reference to Ordinance 102. Yes, ma'am. Um, in reviewing this, it seems like there's some opposition. Uh, and I'm really concerned that Dr. Wilson, one of the members of uh, the MPC, voted in opposition. And she actually resides in the MLK area, right. along with Miss Susie Maxey. Um, I'd like to get a recommendation from Dara. Uh, based on the master plan, Dara, uh, what would what, what would be your recommendation here? 
probably to look into the property, and I can provide you with a recommendation based on the future land use map, okay. um, as well as some of the other considerations. Okay. And I'll land use chapter. Me prior to the meeting tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. I'll have it for you before the meeting tomorrow. Okay. Would you please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, yes, you have three stood in opposition. So actually, there were five people in opposition to this uh, being constructed. Thank you. That's all I have. Any other discussion? Mr. Thompson, is there any tabled legislation that the council will consider tomorrow? I'm not aware of anything, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. I believe that brings us back around to property standards appeals. Mr. Green. This afternoon is 728 Austin Place. Uh, we have made contact with the owner. This is the historical building right there across from. Um, I believe somebody's coming up. Say again? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, the property owner is here. And <laughs> <laughs> she wants some more time. And, um, wow. Thank you. I wasn't sure if I was going to be here. My mother passed away, and I've been gone for two weeks. But I talked to Miss Barnell and got here today. So, um, just kind of wanted to give y'all an update. Um, we are tentatively set for closing for the funding for the exterior of the home on October 25th. So that's a good thing. Um, we went ahead and purchased our. Um, builder's risk insurance so we're ready for that and again our contractor is giving us about a one-year uh, completion on the project so and if those of y'all had seen that article in the times a couple of weeks ago that was very nice and we appreciated that very much that was a very nice article written about the house absolutely well that's great and i appreciate you coming to update us and what i'd like to do is postpone this um for a few months, just so we can get an update, maybe after y'all sure. uh, close in the funding and, and let us know when you're about to start it. So maybe um, these are um, maybe first meeting in December. Oh, first meeting in December is. Would that be? Yeah, I think that, that would be. Um, I'm sorry. First meeting in December is. Um, December 10th. Okay, so I'd like to move to postpone to December 10th. Second. Motion by Councilman Everson, second by Councilman Oliver Jenkins. If no discussion, please vote. And that is six yes, one absent. Thank you, so, much. Thank thank you so much. I appreciate it. property is 3634 Sumner Street. Uh, the property owner is not here, but I did have the opportunity to look at the property. The outside of the structure has been totally repainted. Uh, the roof has been completed. He has secured the structure, and he has asked for uh, 30 more days just to do the fascia board and the windows trim. I'll move on his behalf. For 30 more days. Motion by Councilman Oliver Jenkins. Second. Second by the Vice Chair. I believe it's in Sam's district, right? Yes. Okay. May I, if it was in somebody else's, I'd let them speak. But a <laughs> no discussion, please. Right. It's October 8th. Cousin Oliver. Yeah. I'm <laughs> hearing <laughs> from my brother. <laughs> Six yes, one absent. But it looks good in the picture. Let's put it there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next case. All right. This case is 1831 Hollywood Avenue. Uh, the owner had to leave suddenly this afternoon. Uh, he has asked for 30 more days. The structure is not a, um, a hazard in terms of collapsing or anything like that. He just has a little bit of fascia board and trim around the front porch area of the structure. Um, I noticed on the inside he does have all his materials. He just said he needs some extra time for some funding issues and he asked for 30 days. If I can get a second on that, I'll move. Motion by Vice Chair, second by Councilwoman McCulloch for 30 day extension. <coughs> Please vote. October 8th. 
six yes, one absent. My only, my only comment on this one is it looks like there's some debris around it, but maybe those pictures are. Would be to maybe asking if they'll clean up all this wood pile or whatever that's behind it. I didn't. Uh, I didn't bring my reading glasses today, <laughs> so I might have missed that. You know what I mean? We're gonna have to gravel. I guess uh, it's gravel, and then there's some wood in the back, right? Right. I can't. Okay. I don't have my reading glasses either. To be okay. That's not a problem. We can ask him uh, to go ahead on and put that on the inside. That would be great. Thank you. All right. All right. We have no ABO appeals today. We have no MTC or zoning appeals. We have, oh, we have, we have the alcoholic beverage ordinance appeal. Okay. For uh, Circle K store number 7774. Uh, Mr. Sam Jenkins asked that uh, that would be postponed. And we did talk to uh, the Circle K personnel. And they can't come next week, but they can come October the 7th. So we would ask to be postponed until October 7th. Move to postpone to October 7th. Motion by Councilman Everson, second by Councilwoman McCall. Postpone. Please vote. Six yes, one absent. From a legal perspective, that just means they carry on as they are for another month. Right. Uh, this time, are there any reports from officers, boards, or committees? Yes. Councilman Oliver tickets. We had a public safety committee meeting. Um, we went over some of the uh, discussion about the insurance for taxi service. We are looking for some input and some comps in terms of numbers, in terms of how much financial burden it would really put on them if they we found some middle ground on a different type of insurance limit. So we're hoping to get that back. And another thing they suggested and or are researching is umbrella type policy to cover an entire company instead of the, on a car by car basis. To kind of uh, take some of that burden away from the individual cars. That's one of the issues we discussed. We briefly discussed the Moose Lodge that we need some more work on that going forward. And uh, we talked a little bit about both parade routes and uh, firecracker ordinance. That's all I have. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to commend Julie for doing an excellent job on the uh, patch of gap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other reports? Actually, I have a question if it's in order. Okay. In reference to when will we be meeting on Civic Appropriations Committee? Uh, Civic Appropriations falls under the B4 Committee, and um, we have not yet received the applications from the city, so um, I think they've only recently been due. The city usually processes them and then gets them to us, and as soon as we receive them, we'll schedule the meeting. Or if we get a little we'll heads up. To you, sir. We close out the end of the month, that's this, pull them together, and we'll forward those on. So do you think, um, so do you think we'll receive them um, by the first of next month? Oh, yes, sir. Or you can have them by tomorrow. Oh, it could be some much, much sooner then. Okay, okay. good, okay. good, great. Uh, I had an opportunity to review them. several of them prior to this meeting. Oh, you have them? Yes. Okay. okay. I haven't gotten them yet. So. Yeah, I thought that's the automatically sent them, but I wanted to be sure. I got them provided. Okay. I reviewed several prior to this meeting, so that's why I was just inquiring. Yeah, I got a few, too, that I was copied on, but I haven't gotten the full stack of them. So, but anyway, it sounds like Jackie just got them on Friday. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and plan a, um, a B4 committee meeting, and I'll, uh, I'll see if we can schedule okay, that sometime meet. before the end of the month. Okay. Could you, uh, Jackie, could you make them available in your office so we can stop yeah. by and take a look at them? Yeah. Thank you. That's where I reviewed them, uh, Councilman Shine. Oh, in Jackie's office. office. Well, as, as usual, the amount of requests, uh, Exceeds. <laughs> Quite sure. Well, they're <laughs> high, Jeff. I mean, you know, they always are. Yeah. Ha ha. So wow. We, we gotta have plenty of money. You know? Yeah. 
Well, we we got to we got to have plenty of ability to say not this year. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we got to have. Yeah, but we have some extra money coming in this year. <laughs> we got an extra request this year. Um, yeah. Extra request, less money. Just just the way we don't like it. <laughs> I thought maybe we had some extra money coming in and the people knew about it. And they haven't told me yet. Uh, okay. There's a lot of people that wish there were. Some. Okay. Mr. Thompson, how about a clerk's report? Uh, in view of the time, since I don't want to delay the meeting, <laughs> <laughs> we've been going on so long today. <laughs> well, if there's nothing else, this, this meeting is adjourned. We'll see everybody at 3 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Yes, I have. I do. I don't want. All right. Well, you know, I think we have a side party situation. If I let me know if you can look up on the camera. Oh, that's it. Okay. No, no, no. I can't be. Can't be. 40 minutes is a lot. Mr. Gordon, 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a record. I think that's a record. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a record. We'll, we'll see what goes in. <laughs> <laughs> okay.